circuits is the way how our RF circuits are tuned. In this video, I want to tell you something about the inner workings of this module and give you an idea how you can gain useful measurement data from such a radar module even without sophisticated RF equipment. So without further ado, um, this is it. As you can see here, it's, it's a rather neat little tiny radar module uh, which comes with the shielding can um, and some patch antennas here. And before we go into it and talk about the circuitry, I uh, want to give you a brief introduction about the operational theory behind it and what it can do for you. So, as introduced earlier, it's working on the Doppler uh, principle. So, it's what's called the CW radar, which emits a carrier um, of around 10.52 gigahertz, which is nice because it's a media same Next step, I want to tell you something about how the circuit works in principle. So, first of all, we need an oscillator, which generates the CW output signal. Um, then we need a signal splitter, this is this, uh, drawn here at Wilkinson divider, but this is not important. And then we split the signal into two components. One signal component um, that is emitted through the th um, transmit antenna. And another signal which goes directly to the mixer, or down converter as it also called. And um, when we place this module somewhere where it's going to face some moving object, um, then of course any kind of object that is present there will uh, reflect the waves that is emitted from the TX antenna, they will be picked up by the RX antenna and will be also provided uh, to the down converter or mixer. If this object is stationary, then um, the transmit frequency and the reflected waves will have exactly the same frequency value. So therefore, uh, if we draw it here on a, a very crude depiction of the spectra with a logarithmic frequency scale, you can see that we have here this TX signal and we're getting a received signal which is much, much weaker and which has exactly the same frequency. So the down converter basically subtracts uh, these two frequency values and we end up um, with a frequency of zero, which is of course thing. If this target now moves with a certain uh, um, with a certain speed, then the reflected wave coming from the object will have a frequency that is slightly altered. Uh, with so, this is the very basic operation um, of the circuit. But how can we accomplish this uh, at the price point of only a few euros? So, if you take off the shielding can you are ending up with a picture something like this. And uh, at first glance it looks reasonably complicated, but as we can see it's, it's an ordinary FR4 circuit board. Uh, and then on top of this we have the shielding can and uh, an interesting looking screw here which lines up with this uh, white plastic piece. I have to say that in the example that I have present here on the bench, um, the production quality is not precisely excellent since the white stuff you see in here is actually a lot of glue uh, just splashed over the board because somebody did a rather cute, crude job with uh, attaching this uh, dielectric pellet here uh, but yeah it still works. So what we can see here from, from this picture is that we have two basic, uh, two basic circuit sections. The first one being the oscillator circuit which is located down here. Um, then we have the connecting line to the transmit antenna and then we have the input of the receive antenna which goes to the mixer stage and then uh, here is the connection for the IF, for the intermediate frequency output. So how does that really work? I have here an enlarged view of this overall circuit and we go through it step by step. So first of all we have here the supply with 5 volts DC which just got a uh, resistor in the kilo ohms range um, to bias this amplifier here 
these four pin devices is a very typical kind of way of packaging chips for high frequency applications. And then we see a lot of these uh, circuit components uh, which are called radial subs, uh, which in this case here work as uh, suppression devices for RF since if we wouldn't have them in place here we would see that a lot of RF uh, signal actually leaking out through the bias circuits and doing all kind of messy um, stuff. Interesting about this kind of circuit with respect to all the other cheap Chinese uh, Doppler sensor module is that this one actually uses a more or less proper oscillator using such a dielectric pellet. They had been very popular in times of um, analog satellite TV where we used a lot of them in the uh, low noise block converters directly at the antenna. Now they are not so common anymore. However, um, they are very cheap to produce and produce an excellently clean uh, signal for the RF which is very frequency stable which sets this design apart from all the other stuff out there that just uses transmission lines um, for, for resonators. Then um, we have here right at the output of this amplifier um, an interesting line configuration which I guess has an electrical length of about three times lambda fourth. So we are transforming here like uh, an open circuit into a short, into an open, into a short again. And I guess uh, we are utilizing this E field maximum here in these sections to couple into the dielectric pellet. And then the dielectric pellet in return couples onto this about lambda half long line. And this um, forms the resonance circuit which drives the oscillator section. Um, it's very interesting that the screw uh, we saw early on uh, in the shielding can here is located directly above this dielectric pellet and this actually allows to alter the resonant frequency of this pellet slightly due to capacitive loading. So uh, this could be used to tune um, the overall circuit to be within, for example, an ISM band or to get the maximum sensitivity out of it. So this thing is now happily resonating at uh, 10.5 something gigahertz. We have here just an ordinary coupling capacitor and then we're coupling out the signal onto the transmitter. Now we are getting back our reflected signal which is hopefully a slightly altered in frequency in order to produce an um, IF output, then uh, we reach the mixer stage here, which is driven by the oscillating signal from uh, uh, by the oscillator signal on one hand, uh, serving as a reference, so to say, and on the other hand, we obviously here need some kind of uh, balanced uh, way of supplying the received signal here in order to gain the desired IF signal. Um, so they've introduced a lambda half line here. This performs down conversion and here again the radial stop is rejecting the RF so this stage kind of serves as a low pass filter and only the baseband signal can leave the signal trace down to the Even RF. Even though this is a rather appealing design um, for switching on and off some kind of circuitry um, this IF signal itself is not really well suited because as we introduced earlier we have probably very weak AC signals which are in the range of some hertz starting around 1, 2, 3 hertz going up to maybe a kilohertz if we are lucky so therefore the signals are very well in an audible range and actually this is one of the things we can use to our benefit since if we don't want to use some fancy kind of electronics or build something, uh, we need to use something that's already there and luckily everybody of us possesses some kind of fancy audio analyzer already. Actually it's the computer that you're using to right attach now. this radar module to some kind of audio check here. Because you see I have only soldered the shielding to the ground pin and the signal lead to the IF output and then I can attach this one directly to the sound card of my PC 
And here I have fabric cobbled together and even more crude setup in order to measure um, the frequency response of this unit by um, using this speaker with a bit of copper foil here as a target. And um, if I now play back a test signal, which will be a frequency sweep with the speaker, the membrane vibrates. And as you can see here in the frequency domain, we are, we are getting um, actually a pretty decent response as long as the frequency is not too high. Now I'm sweeping from 10 Hz uh, up and down to one kilohertz. And as you can see here, at the moment we're getting below the 300 Hz mark or something like this. We are getting a pretty good response until it starts fading away.